This is totally useless information with Nick and Roy. Listen, laugh, and learn. What is the deadliest animal in the world? I'm scared to even find out. Why do female <laughs> spiders stroke their mates' bellies? I'll tell you, Roy. I'm Nick. And I'm Roy. Welcome to season six, episode number three. We scour the internet and other sources to find useless information just for you. Plus, we will answer your questions from our mailbag segment. And a headline from news from around the world, a man hid from police in Alabama. Guess where they found him? Hint, he was static free. Totally useless information. It's everything you never needed to know. Welcome to the Totally Useless Information Fashion Show. If there's an icon for fashion, keep looking because it's not, not it's not us. It's not Nick and Roy icon. <laughs> Just keep looking. Do Just, not pass go. Just keep sometimes, going. Sometimes we do this show with no pants on. Oh, was that? <laughs> oh, I knew I forgot something. I forgot to remind you to put your pants on. I know. I know. Well, there you go. So well, thank God. It, uh, thank God the Zoom thing is only like from a bust, so to speak. <laughs> yeah, it is. We do have a bust. Mm -hmm. um, so I know you're down in Southwest Florida and it really doesn't snow uh, mm. all that often, except maybe in your freezer. But when you used to live in New York, as Roy and I lived in New York many years ago, you used to wear a parka coat. Do you ever have a mm -hmm. parka? Sure. It was originally created by the Caribou Inuit to keep warm in the Canadian Arctic. Of course. Oh, so the Canadians invented it. It was originally made from seal or caribou skin and often coated with fish oil for waterproofing. So they made it out of seal skin. Yes. And then covered it with what? Fish oil for waterproofing. The seal oil wasn't enough? No, it wasn't it enough. Stinky, stinky. That's why it was very hard for the Canadians to meet people years ago. <laughs> that's why they that's why they kiss with their noses. They're like, I don't know about these Canadians. There's something fishy about them. <laughs> <laughs> it is. But parkas were adopted in the U.S. military for pilots and soldiers stationed in cold climates with their oversized fit enabling them to be worn over bulky uniforms. Okay, I'm sorry. Again, I have to stop you because yes. this will give me an idea of the Canadian military. Yes. There's nothing more comfortable to fight in than a big parker. But hold on. <laughs> you can't even raise the gun. Shoot well, the, no, hold on. Let me finish because it, 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 that's that's addressed later on in this in this fact here. Just bear with me. So the yeah. oversized fit enabled them to be worn over their bulky uniforms. Hoods were lined with fur for added warmth and later replaced with pile due to wartime rationing. The large pockets made it a practical garment with room for storing food or ammunition. Does that solve your problem? <laughs> no. no, no, because all I know is the enemy was like, okay, don't shoot. You know, you ever, you ever heard don't shoot until you see the whites of their eyes? Yeah. They were like, don't shoot until you smell the fishy Canadian army coming. <laughs> they got a sandwich in their pocket and some bullets. Talk about bite the bullet. Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> to show you that the world has changed so, so much. Yeah. And, you know, I know that every generation, the older people always say, oh, my God, when I was younger, the world's changed. Oh, my God. You know. But the world has changed so much. In 1907, in the state of Massachusetts in America, uh, in fact, the city of Boston, mm -hmm. a woman was arrested at the beach and charged with indecent exposure. What? You got it. 1907. She was wearing a one-piece bathing suit. Oh. The cop said, he said she had displayed her arms and her legs... And a portion of her upper chest area. Mm hmm. And we cuffed were, her up, mm -hmm. brought her in. Yeah. Big to do. And they were worried about us not wearing pants. I mean, are you kidding me? I mean, nowadays, first off, I went to a club the other night with my wife, and the women are dressed inappropriately. Complete. I hate it. I hate having to look at it all night long. Yeah. And, <laughs> and you kept looking around the room to make sure everyone was dressed. Well, uniform. we went on Friday. I said, we need to go back on Saturday to see if this happens again. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it was just a, a one-off thing. You want to make sure it, is, it doesn't repeat itself. Yeah. I tell you, it went off. I'm afraid to ask you this question. Do you wear pajamas at night? I go commando, Nick. I, okay. I sleep completely naked. Well, Although you... I do use covers. Okay. 
Well, pajamas. I don't want the neighbors to look in and be embarrassed at themselves. Pajamas were originally only for the rich and the royal. In the Middle mm. Ages, it was only monarchs and those of noble birth wore pajamas. Inspired by Indian, Asian, and Roman costumes, they yes. would be decorated in elaborate designs and patterns with wide sleeves, while those that were poor wore a shapeless smock when they went to sleep. Up until the 19th century, there was no need for fashion models. No? Why? And this is going to make complete sense to you because the world, again, was totally different. It was more <laughs> common sense oriented. Right. The clothes at the fashion show were displayed on dolls or mannequins and so that you could see them, feel them, and get a good look completely around the garment. All right. Okay, just think about that for a second. Now, <laughs> wow. no, some girl yeah. is is walking down the runway at like 30 miles per hour, spins around as though we're really supposed to look at the garment. We look at her. You never even get a chance to see the garment. No. She spins around once or twice and walks back down the runway. How do you even get a chance to see what it looks like or the, the quality of it or how does it feel, the material and so on? Back then in the 19th century, they had it right. So you have to pay attention to when you go to one of those um, runway fashion shows? Well, I also think about things very practically, Nick. If the clothes are on the mannequins and dolls, that means the models aren't wearing anything. It's oh. a win-win. <laughs> Send your complaints to nickandroy.com. <laughs> now, speaking of models, and most of them would probably wear night dresses or nighties. Again with the pajamas? Yeah. But only recently they became thought of women wearing them. Mm. It wasn't until the turn of the century as before that most men commonly slept in night dresses. It was after the Great Depression and World War II that the shift began to happen. Men became more concerned with their look and how they were presenting themselves to the public that the night dress became a thing of the past and so only women wore them. Right. Wow. Yeah, I can just imagine them rewriting the. You know, remember, remember that song, "My Favorite Things." Men mm -hmm. in night dresses and five o'clock shadows. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a Monty Python. Skit. Yeah, it is. Yeah. <laughs> the design of Mark Jacobs, uh -huh. famous for his clothing designs and perfumes. Mark yeah. Jacobs, really big designer. No. Um, I know my wife has a bunch of Mark Jacobs stuff, bags, things like that. Mm -hmm. Mark Jacobs has 27 tattoos, but the one that caught my attention that I would have never expected the designer of his caliber to have, his largest tattoo is a SpongeBob SquarePants. <laughs> Did that just think about it? Really? SpongeBob SquarePants, absolutely no fashion design to the clothing that he's wearing. <laughs> How weird is that? I just had to throw that one in there. Well, of course. I mean, if he's well, he's wearing square pants, how stylish yeah. could that be? It isn't stylish. There's no, nothing about not it. Not at that's, all. You know, pleats. Yeah, that's what I said. Now, I said, uh, what? what? No pleats? You and I have worn suits before, and it's customary. Uh, occasionally, I yeah, have. Yeah, of course, know, down there in Florida. When I'm going to sleep. Yeah. <laughs> so you know how the last button is always unbuttoned? It's customary to leave it unbuttoned. Yes. Okay. It was King Edward VIII had a 48-inch mm. waist. Whoa, he's pretty big man. The same bulge Henry VIII flaunted when he first sat on the throne. It was a little too big for the future king to handle. Mm. Edward grew so quickly that he couldn't. Sounds like one of those story times. Edward sat mm. on the throne. He got too Edward big. Edward grew so quickly. <laughs> it did. He bought and the beans from Jack. That's right. <laughs> and then he wore a nightdress and a five o'clock shadow. And so... <laughs> He grew so... And danced around with Mark Jacobs. No. <laughs> we tied all together. Alleg allegedly. Allegedly, yeah. <laughs> Edward grew so quickly that he couldn't fasten his waistcoat's button on the bottom. Deciding hmm. that he liked that look, he kept it unbuttoned. He unknowingly created the trend of leaving the bottom button of a suit unbuttoned because it was too fat to sit on the throne. It also helps, too, if you're going to sit down. I don't care how fat or skinny you are. If you had both buttons buttoned and you sat down, it's an uncomfortable feeling. Exactly. The jacket doesn't give, you know? It doesn't. It takes, but no. it doesn't give. Oh, it's a taker. It's a one-way street, those jackets. Yeah. Why? Now, this has a lot to do with Nick's uh, male wearing the dress pajama thing. Yeah. 
With so many fashion magazines in place today, I mean, there's hundreds of fashion magazines, and yeah. there's, like some of the big ones are like massive, massive magazines. Mm -hmm. Every woman has as um, Vogue and things like that. Right. So, but it's hard to believe that the first French fashion magazine, 1678, was aimed to men. They're probably showing off their night dresses. <laughs> 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 Absolutely, they were. We oui, we. Oui. And then they lifted one of them up and said, "Hey, check out this SpongeBob SquarePants tattoo I got on my on the old caboose." Absolutely. Hey, maybe next year they'll invent underwear. <laughs> yeah, they might. Be. They might. You're listening to totally useless information with Nick and Roy. Animal. I think we've done animals for a while. It's been a while, and we brought them in. Yeah. And, and you know what I found out this just in? Snails have thousands of teeth. Snails? Snails have thousands of teeth. Depending wow. on the breed, snails can have 2,000 to 14,000 teeth. And it takes mm -hmm. them three days to brush them. Snails and slugs eat wow. with a jaw and a flexible band of thousands of microscopic teeth called radula. The radula scrapes up or rasps food particles, and the jaw cuts off larger pieces of food like a leaf to be rasped by the radula. Thousands of teeth. Oh, on a snail. On you a know, snail. I knew a snail once went to a car dealership. He says, I want to buy that car, but you have to put a big S on the door. And the guy said, why? Yeah. He said, so when I drive by, they say, look at that S car go. <laughs> Oh, I get it now. I'm sorry. I'm a little. Uh, look at the escargo. I'm a little slow. It, you know what? It takes me Pretty 90. Funny. It takes me 90 minutes to watch 60 minutes. Nick and Roy will continue with totally useless information. Totally useless information with Nick and Roy continues. Listen, laugh, and learn. Ladies and gentlemen, get I, your attention, please. Yes. This was my teaser. Yeah. What is the deadliest animal on the planet? Is it a snake, Nick? A shark? A, a tiger? Yes, snake. yes, yes. Snake, sharks, tigers, oh my. Nuts. <laughs> Men's at night dresses and five o'clock shadows, yes? No, 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 no. It is the mosquito. Oh. 725,000 people a year die oh. from the mosquito, giving them malaria, dengue fever, or yellow fever. 725,000 people. Shouldn't we be wearing masks for that? Yeah, we should. Okay. <laughs> Square pants masks. We, again, we are not doctors. No. <laughs> oh, thank goodness for that. Lots of people are applauding here. Hold on. Do you the hear mosquito it? Mosquito is responsible yes. for 725,000 deaths, Nick. Um, here's a question for the masses Do worms pee? Ooh. Good question. Do they even have a PP? <laughs> they look like a PP, don't they? Uh, yeah. There isn't. Yeah. Well, no, sadly, there isn't such a thing as worm pee. Earthworms do not urinate like mammals. The hmm. term worm tea, however, is often used to refer to drainage of liquid. And it seeps out of their body. Nick, if you're going to use a fact like this, you need to bring a worm in so we can check this out. You know, give him a good squeeze. See where it comes out. That's right. <laughs> and speaking of opening up a can of worms. Yeah, give him a big hug. I've, I've heard many a gardener say that it's earthworms are really, really good for your soil and your grass. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's because they're seeping the old uh, compost out. <laughs> Little is known about the giant squid, and for years they were even thought to be fables made up in novels about sailing the ocean and sailors out on the big blue waters and being attacked by big massive squid, mm -hmm. and it was thought to be a, a tale, but they are real. Yes, they're real. In fact, the largest squid found was over 50 feet long and weighed over one ton that is larger than a yellow school bus. Wow. Okay. Now that's a large order of fried calamari. <laughs> <laughs> it, it sure you ever is. order fried calamari and they bring you like 10 pieces? <laughs> Who are they making this for? I ordered fried calamari. I didn't order like Gerber fried calamari for like a, an infant. No. <laughs> I, want, I want that 50-footer. 
Yeah, one that King Henry VIII ate, which is why he had you to... Wonder, maybe they, did they pee? But anyway, I digress. Yeah. <laughs> I'll wait and watch. I don't know. They sit there. Okay, you can pee now. Um, frogs and spiders. Okay, it, it's in, it is possible, by the way, to hypnotize a frog by placing it on his back and gently stroking its stomach. And me okay. too. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> To hypnotize a lizard or a frog or Roy, you put yeah, it on You can back. hypnotize my snake by rubbing. <laughs> to hypnotize a lizard or a frog, put it on its back and hold it still for a few seconds and rub its belly. Really? We have lizards all over the place, those little geckos. They're all over the place. Well, you open your front door, they're scurrying all over the place. Well, you tell them that if they don't stop running around, you're going to, you're going to threaten them by hypnotizing them. Yeah, I'll hypnotize them and teach them to do things, like cut the grass. <laughs> <laughs> now, here's my teaser. The female spiders that kill their mates often hypnotize the male into immobility. Like most wives. By stroking its... <laughs> They yeah. got that down pat, let me tell yeah, they you. they do. So the reason why I put these two together is because it's very similar. So yes, you can hypnotize a frog by stroking its belly. The female spiders that kill their mates mm -hmm. often hypnotize the male into immobility before mating by stroking its belly. Oh, so they so lure the spider, yeah, yeah it lures the men. Right, rubs his uh, belly. Human, human women use makeup. <laughs> And fancy clothes. <laughs> they lure, they lure us in. They rub they our just... bellies. They have their way with us, and then they kill us. <laughs> they kill us. Oh, yes. Not you, honey, though. Not no, you, if you're no, listening. No, honey, me too. <laughs> me too, dear. Yes, dear. You're one of the different ones, I tell you. <laughs> <laughs> you know what a swift is? Isn't that something you wipe your floors with? Oh. That's a swifter. Oh, sorry. Swiffer, yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. No, I don't then. The swift is a bird. Oh. But the swift is known for something. It spends almost its entire life flying. Okay. Now, that's even hard to believe because you think of a bird, the bird flies around, he lands in a tree, right? I yeah. mean, he takes a break, he flies around a little. Mm -hmm. Not this guy. Studies have shown over a 10-month period I don't know why they just didn't go for the whole year, but over a 10-month period... Slackers. The Swift stopped flying for less than two hours. Why? No, that's it. He rested for two hours. He flew, He he was flying for the entire... He flown. He flown. <laughs> <laughs> he was flying for the entire rest of the time of the 10 months. Only two hours. I guess he stopped to pay tolls or something. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> and so when we know that old joke, like when he he went somewhere and he said, "I just came back from Arizona," and boy, are my wings tired. He means it. Cause no, like, really. I mean, can you imagine that? And then you wonder, how does he pee? <laughs> <laughs> That's why he has to stop to pee for two hours. <laughs> A single strand of spider silk. Talk about alliteration, huh? A mm -hmm. single strand of spider silk is thinner than a human hair. But Whoa. it's also five times stronger than steel of the same width. So if you made steel at that that width of the of the actual web, spider silk, yes. So the spider's web would be stronger than the steel. That's right. A rope just two inches thick can right. reportedly stop a seven forty seven. A rope of of web two inches thick. Of the spider's web. Could stop a 747. That's correct. Wow. Yep. That's amazing. Yeah. Of course. One the Spider-Man can swing from all those buildings. <laughs> yes. He can. <laughs> in theaters now. Okay. Speaking of, of peeing and pooping. <laughs> <laughs> totally useless <laughs> information with Nick Wonderful and Roy. Wonderful segue. Yeah. Wonderful segue. I'm doing it right now. <laughs> no. One large cow can poop more than 15 times a day. So can I. What we have a lot in common, cows. Yeah. So what about a medium cow? That's a large cow. What about a medium cow? We have so much in common with cows. Right. I poop 15 times a day, and Nick looks like one. Uh, <laughs> a cow? That was below the belt. Okay, so the cow poops 15 times a day. Right. About 115 pounds of poop or manure mm -hmm. per day. 
one cow, one large cow, 21 tons a year of poop. Now, this should have been my animal fact number two because it was about number, number two. two. I don't know why. <laughs> that's that's mind-boggling. 115 pounds a day. He poops a woman every day. Really? Think about it. 115 no, pounds I, of No, I don't want to think about a cow pooping out a woman. And who the hell followed this cow around and weighed it? <laughs> that's right. Well, wasn't it... <laughs> Hold on. A couple of weeks ago, didn't you talk about how it was the the um, the the something of stool? Um, the duke, oh, the the uh, the something the servant of stool. Yeah, yeah something the, like that. We walk around the and, king. and wipe the king's butt. Yeah. So there you go. Maybe could they... you imagine the guy doing the study? Asked the other scientist, "Can you do me a favor? I'm doing something. Can you weigh that poop?" And he said, "No, no, no. I got to pay attention to the swift. <laughs> he might land." You know. Speaking of swift, you can swiftly go to nickandroy.com, which is our website. Can Where do you... they go? NickandRoy.com. Nick and That's Roy. Nick and, Nick dot. and www.nickandroy.com. That's the website. You can go check us out. You can check out all the full library of over 100 episodes. NickandRoy.com. And you are listening to Totally Useless Information with Nick and Roy. Yeah, and they can look at those um, birthday card things that we do for people. Those are cool. NickandRoy.com slash birthdays. If you have a, a special loved one that's having a birthday soon, Send us, uh, go to the page, nickandroy.com slash birthdays, fill out the form, and for a reasonable price, Roy and I will put together totally useless facts about it's that. It's a great gift. It really, it's just a great gift. It's unique. It, it, people, people remember it. They and share it's it. Inexpensive. It's exactly. inexpensive and it, it done by two big stars like Nick and I. Right. Nick and Roy will continue with totally useless information. To access the full library of episodes, visit nickandroy.com. That's nickandroy.com. We're back with totally useless information with Nick and Roy. Listen, laugh, and learn. From Beethoven to Bieber, rock and roll to rhythm and blues, this is totally useless music information with Nick and Roy. Okay, I'm going to go first with music. How's that? Sure, go ahead. When you think of the home of jazz, what do you think of? New Orleans. Right. How about country music? Nashville. Yes. How about bluegrass music? North Carolina. No, come on. <laughs> Kentucky bluegrass. Oh, that's right. Yeah, Kentucky, yeah. Kentucky, I have to... Kentucky. Okay. Now here's the big one. Rap music. Oh, uh, Los Angeles. Bronx, New York. Really? Me and Nick are from the Bronx. Let's oh. go. Let's hear it yeah. from the Bronx. Yeah. yeah, the Bronx cheer. <laughs> yeah, the Bronx, the Bronx have come up with with um two great things that they're proud of. Rampant crime and rap music. <laughs> there and one has nothing to do with the other. No, 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 no. I love rap music. Didn't you see the Super Bowl? You know what? Did you see it? Yeah, did I did. you see the Super Bowl? Did I you did. see Snoop Dogg and yeah. Eminem and yeah. Dr. Dre? Yeah, I thought it was excellent. I, I enjoyed it. I really did enjoy it. It was very, very, very good. And it was old school stuff, so that was that was cool. Yeah, we, we remember those songs. Mm hmm. Yeah. Hotel Motel. <laughs> yeah, you say yeah, but do you know how many people listening to the show going holiday? Yeah. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> So should I give them a moment to finish the line? Go ahead. You know what? I'll give the audience. You don't have to rewind the show here. Yeah, exactly. You ready? You can they do it again. It. They know they it. Know they it. listen okay, to fine. this. They listen. They could be 60, 70. They listen to it in the car when they drive. So we speak <laughs> slower and louder then. Uh, on May 14, 1998, there are two significant events that happened on that day. May 14, 1998, the finale of Seinfeld, and it's the day that Frank Sinatra died. Ooh, I didn't know that. Frank Sinatra died May 14, 1998. Again, the very same night of Seinfeld's finale. His ambulance made it to the hospital in record time because there wasn't any traffic. Everyone People was at home watching, watching the finale. Sadly, yeah. he didn't make it because, you know, whatever. I forget what he died of, but, you know, even though it got there in record time. He had a very dramatic heart attack when they, when they brought him to the hospital. He said he did it his way. He did. <laughs> And the very next night, May 15, 1998, the Empire State Building in New York was illuminated blue for old blue eyes, and Las Vegas honored Sinatra by dimming the lights. Oh, wow. 
No. See, you learn all kinds of stuff on this show. Listen, folks. laugh, and learn. I don't care what people say, like these two guys are crazy. They should put on pants. <laughs> but no, you learn a lot on this show. George Strait. Yeah. He's known as the king of country, has more number one hits than any performer in any genre. Now, folks, this is the one to write down. In 30 years, George Strait had over 60 number one hits, putting away guys like Elvis, the Beatles, and uh, Michael Jackson, and, you know, I mean, others. But, but George Strait, king of country. Well, let's go back to Frank Sinatra, and when he was first coming out on the scene... I'd rather not. <laughs> no, Frank Sinatra had a lot of screaming teenage girls, right? Mm -hmm. And he had an amazing voice, of course. Some people thought he was one of the best singers. He was one of the best lyricists because it didn't sound like he was singing. It sounded like he was telling a story, all that stuff. He was a crooner. He was. Yeah. I love crooners with my car. Oh, that's crueler. Sorry. Yeah. Anyway, not to take anything away from his amazing voice and his ability to excite the female throngs, not thongs, mm -hmm. but throngs. Yeah. He took off the thongs. But the Bobby the thongs. Soxer craze Sinatra incited because, you know, the co-ed fans were Catholic school Bobby Sox. Okay. Why did they call them Bobby Sox? Then they should call him Frankie Sox. <laughs> okay. George Evans, <laughs> Sinatra's publicist, auditioned girls for how loud they could scream. They paid them five bucks and placed them strategically in the audience to help whip up excitement. Ah, uh, marketing. If you bring up, a, a, I know the folks out listening right now are going to be happy about what I'm about to say. If he brings up another old blue eyes Frank Sinatra thing, I'm going to get, they're going to be calling Nick old black eyes. <laughs> <laughs> My eyes are blue. Nick, how we connect is really bizarre to tell uh, really honestly we do this a lot yeah nick actually said something from the sound of music a little while ago and i have a fact about the sound of music so yeah. this is so weird okay and nick happened to be in the sound of music and so was i in the show right nick nick you had a much bigger part than i did i had like a, a couple of lines i had like i was three franz lines. the butler yeah you had yeah. you had a good part yeah um you know the movie, The Sound of Music, right? Not the play, the movie itself. Right. It, it actually saved 20th Century Fox. They were going bankrupt, and the movie was such a success that it had such a long run that 20th Century Fox made a killing on the film. Not necessarily what was going on in the film being a killing because of the Nazis and stuff. I'm saying a killing money wise. Right. But did you know that Julie Andrews actually learned how to play the guitar so that she could do her scenes realistically without faking it. So she took guitar lessons for a couple of months before the shoot yeah. so that she could play guitar, and she literally learned how to play guitar and played all of her scenes. She played the guitar. And I know what she did. She started from the very beginning, a very good place yeah. to start. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Took her 16 years, going on 17. <laughs> yeah, she climbed every mountain. <laughs> yeah, and, and the, you know, I, I watched the play. I said, so there you are standing there. <laughs> Gazing at you. In 1946, Frank Sinatra's debut release, The Voice oh, of Oh, this Sinatra. guy's getting a punch in the eye. <laughs> <laughs> he helped introduce. Now, this is how important he is now. This is why I chose Frank Sinatra for most of my, most of all of my music items. Let's see. Uh, yeah, yeah, all of my music items. Uh. Okay. No, this is important because he was the okay. one to introduce. Do it your way, Nick. I'll do my it way. my way, okay? Which, by the way, <laughs> he didn't like that song. It's one of the songs he didn't like. I know. Okay. So he basically came up with the concept album and the box set. Oh. So at a time when long playing records or LPs were still novel, Frank issued a set of 78 RPM records. And you kids, you can look that up on the Google machine. Mm -hmm. 78 RPM records with eight songs all with the theme of lost love. It sold for a hefty $2.50 or $30 in today dollars. Ooh, but the price didn't prevent it from topping the charts for seven weeks. Two years later, it became the first ever pop music vinyl 10-inch LPs. Wow, isn't that amazing? He invented the box set, and now he's in a box. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> with a bottle of... Sorry, Jeff Frank. 
with a bottle of Jack Daniels. If you remember a few episodes ago, he was yes. buried with a bottle of Jack Daniels because I he think often Dean had, Martin gave it to him, correct? Because uh, yes, because he was part of the Rat Pack, right? Was it wasn't Dean Martin part of the Rat Pack? Yeah, Dean Martin. Right. I I, I can't remember if it was Dean Martin or, or Peter Laurie or whatever the or the other guy, Peter. But Lawford the reason why uh, I mean, the Frank Sinatra loved Jack Daniels. He would go up on the stage with uh, some Jack Daniels, and so Jack Daniels distilleries. Uh, pay tribute to him by burying him with a bottle of Jack Daniels. See, it all comes back yeah, to... And they came out with a, by the way, they came out with a Frank Sinatra branded Jack Daniels. They did. One See? of the few with a name, other person's name. Madonna, we all know her as the original material girl yeah. and like a virgin. Yeah. Madonna, I have news for you. You're either you are or you're not. There's no like a virgin. <laughs> <laughs> Well, she was a teenager, right? So if like someone said that to me, like, are you a virgin? Well, I'm like a virgin. I'd be like, okay, no, you know no, what? No. <laughs> it's semantics at this point. Yes, exactly. So did you know that she started her music career in a band hmm. years earlier? And as usual, I have all the information for you listeners. The gotcha. band was called The Breakfast Club. Oh. And... She was not the singer, because she really wasn't a singer, but she was not the singer. She was the drummer. The drummer. I was going to say she was dancer. the drummer of a band called The Breakfast Club. And then she went out on her own and realized by scantily dressing and putting on a pointy bra that people would look at her. Yeah. And she could sing like, I got back. Yeah. <laughs> Top the charts and everything. Yeah. So that's, um, not, all she, that's not all she topped. <laughs> <laughs> No, no, no. So all of us remember. Shout out to Jelly Bean Benitez. <laughs> <laughs> That's a real one. You know when people mishear lyrics. Maybe we'll do that one uh, one time when we do music here on Totally Useless Information with Nick and Roy. When people mishear lyrics, but apparently in the song um, uh, La Isla Bonita, last night I dreamt of soft bagels. <laughs> That's not what she says. No, it's not. Nick and Roy will continue with Totally Useless Information. You're listening to Totally Useless Information with Nick and Roy. Listen, laugh, and learn. Where do expressions come from? We want to know right now. How about wear your heart on your sleeve? This is one that we all know, and it's actually from the Middle Ages when knights would fight in tournaments their lady friends, wives, girlfriends, Heidi Clooms, would give them a piece of maybe a handkerchief or something of theirs, fabric of theirs, to wear on their sleeve so that they could show off and say that they had this woman, you know. So they would be wearing their heart on their sleeve for everyone to see. And now for something completely useless. Who invented the first calculator? Now, of course, we're not talking about the modern calculator, but the first calculator was invented by a guy named Blaise Pascal, or Blasi Pascal. Okay. He was a Frenchman. Okay. So they invented that and men's fashion magazines. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. So Blasi, or Bla Blaise Pascal, in 1642 after three years of working on it and over 50 prototypes, I want to know how he counted them because he didn't have a calculator. <laughs> no, but 50 prototypes, he finally came up with a usable system of calculating so that they could do advanced calculations. So thank you, Blaise Pascal from 1642. Want to hear a story. funny story? You sure. When, when I first met my wife, it was Valentine's Day, and we kind of really weren't going with each other. So we, she didn't get anything for me. So she thought it was terrible. So at the last minute, she ran into a store, a chocolate store. Yeah. And they were all out of everything, like chocolate hearts, things like that. So she bought a chocolate calculator. And she wrote on the card, this is so we can count the good times that we have together. Wow. And later on in years, I find out it was because she was 
didn't really buy me anything. It's a sad story. <laughs> and now the world knows. <laughs> yeah. And at the time, she figures it was a calculated risk in marrying you. <laughs> Rita Moreno, the, the, uh, the great actress and singer and dancer. She's one, great. One of Rita Moreno's greatest accomplishments is being listed in the Guinness Book of World Records. She's the only actress to win all four entertainment awards. She won an Oscar for West Side Story. Right. She won the Primetime Emmy Award for The Rockford Files and being on The Muppets. Wow. The Tony Award, which is, you know, Broadway's award for The Ritz, and a Grammy Award for music for the children's album The Electric Company. Holy mackerel. So Rita Moreno. That's right. She was on the electric company. That's right. And again, if you're of a certain age, if not, you can look it up. The electric company was kind of like the grown up version uh, of Sesame actually, Street. Of Sesame Street. So you watched Sesame Street when you were younger, and then you sort of graduated, if you will. Yeah, because the they wanted company. you to pay the electric company. Yeah, then they had to And use a calculator to figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> hey, today on the show, we talk about fashion, we talk about animals, some really interesting stuff about music. It's time for the news. And now, from around the corner and around the world, this is TUI News. The Morgan County Sheriff's Office found the man who escaped an attempted hmm. traffic stop two months prior to the arrest. There's a big criminal here. Tyler James Freeman, 23. Was, Got three names. Was found in a home <laughs> on Nethery Road in Alabama. So it's not Florida. So thank goodness. Thank you. Where did they find him? The sheriff's they, office. The difference between Alabama and Florida is in Florida, the cops don't even look for people that get away. But go ahead. No. <laughs> The, 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 Plenty of lunatics to find that just knew. The difference between Alabama and Florida is nine teeth. Wow. They don't have a two drink minimum. They have a two tooth minimum in the bar at Alabama. Oh, thanks to all our listeners in Alabama. Thank you very much. Oh, yeah. Tyler James Freeman, 23, was found in a home in Nethery Road in Alabama. It's not Florida, so you can relax, Roy. Most of these. He was hiding. He, he was, was hiding. hiding. Well, where did they find him? The sheriff's office said he was hiding in a dryer. Oh, he got inside of the dryer. That's why in my tease I said that he didn't have any static cling. And what was his first name, Tyler? Tyler. Tyler James Freeman. Oh, my God. Could you imagine him putting the handcuffs on? He keeps falling down because he was going around in circles the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> he was dizzy from being in a dryer. Somerville. He was in there with the cat. <laughs> you know, we had a cat that jumped in the dryer yeah. once and went around a few times. We, yeah. went, ba -boom, ba -boom, ba -boom. <laughs> we opened it up. The cat came out. And the cat Stupid came back. Cat. Somerville yeah, yeah. police initially attempted to stop Freeman in December, but he ran away and the sheriff's office said he stole a Somerville police car. This oh says a lot. God. This says a lot about the Somerville police. Okay, this guy, you know, right? The cops were like, "We really didn't mind him too much when we cuffed him. He had such really soft clothes <laughs> <laughs> and no static cling." He's the guy. He's the guy that's his mugshot. He has a dryer sheet on his head. <laughs> <laughs> it stuck to the side of his head. <laughs> I'll tell you, they should go soft on him. Yeah, but amazingly, he was April Fresh. <laughs> now, wait a minute. They take this guy in. He escapes with a police car. Right. So, Somerville police, I mean, you know, th there's a lot to be desired there because the, he They've stole... been embarrassed. Well, it took him two months to find him. He it stole was the, probably the only car. car in the whole police department. <laughs> but it's okay. <laughs> well, thank goodness it's because... 1967 Dodge car in there. <laughs> From Mayberry, but go ahead. The car was later found on Perkins Wood Road in Alabama, uh -huh. but Freeman wasn't inside. In a washing machine. Now, when they did eventually... Uh, they found the car was freshly washed <laughs> by Mr. Right. Tyler. That's right. I washed the car for you while I had it in custody. I'm very neat. I'm like, I like my clothes neat. Go ahead. Freeman was charged with attempting to elude, resisting... What do you mean attempting to elude? He did elude them. He didn't just Res elude. He was, the man stuffed himself in a dryer. Exactly. <laughs> Resisting arrest, third degree escape, oh fourth degree theft, first degree theft. If these cops were smart, they wouldn't have taken him out. They just would have locked the door of the dryer. <laughs> exactly. Or just roll him in on a hand truck into the, into the courtroom. So this guy was some piece of work. 
Third degree <laughs> your, escape. Your Honor, we'll let him speak once the spin dry is done. <laughs> once the buzzer goes up. <laughs> hey, he's ready. There were three additional charges that are pending from the police. According to jail records, Freeman was booked into the Morgan right. County Jail a $9,578 bond and a box of bounce fabric softener sheets. Wow, $978 No, no, $9,578. dollars $9, 9000 or 30 dryer. <laughs> he's actually, he has a new job now, Mr. Tyler. They rehabilitated him, and he's the new Maytag man on the television <laughs> Hey, speaking of bouncing, we got to get out of here. This is all the time that we have oh, for this wow. week's episode of Totally Useless Information with Nick and Roy. We thank you very much for listening. Next week, it will be Totally Useless Information with Nick, Roy, and Tyler. <laughs> Not with less static cling. Uh, yeah. His jokes are drier than ours. <laughs> Come on, tell the people what to do. I'll tell you what to do, folks. First off, you go to nickandroy.com. Second off, you tell all of your friends. Third off, if you see it on Facebook, you share it with everybody you know. Even if you don't see it, you're right. This is the greatest thing since sliced bread. I'm Roy. And I'm Nick. Thank you for listening. Totally Useless Information with Nick and Roy is a production of NickAndRoy.com. Visit NickAndRoy.com to access the full library of episodes or wherever you get your podcasts.